Hi everyone and welcome. I'm out here in my garden and there's a whole bunch of cars zipping around making a bunch of noise. So hopefully uh, I don't get drowned out by the excess racket in the background. But if you've been here before on my channel and you've been following along, then you probably know that this is my outdoor worm bin. There's been a little bit of drama occurring in this bin lately. And it all stemmed from little creatures that had made their way into the bin. And there were traces of, the, uh, of their activity in here because a lot of these peanut shells were on top of the plastic that we just removed. There were all kinds of burrows and tunnels dug into here but now it's been about four days since I reassembled this bin and tried to get it off to a new start and I think we're in good shape now I had uh, I had taken some measures to try to avoid uh, allowing it to get preyed on again I've kind of uh, lifted up high what is this not sure what that is I don't think it's a worm. It might be a millipede. Millipedes are not problems in a worm bin, especially when I'm dealing with my outdoor worm bin. I expect there to be all kinds of creatures in here helping to break down the stuff. But when I find traces of predatory creatures coming in here and eating all of our worms, then, then I take uh, issue with that. So I think we've actually remedied that problem now. And we've, we've even gone so far as to try to launch some more worms back into the population here to try to rekindle what had been lost through the uh, invasion. So, it's getting a little bit late in the day, but there's just enough light remaining, I believe, for me to uh, slip on a glove and we're gonna go visit my outdoor compost bin because in my outdoor compost bin, I know I've got tons and tons of worms that we can use to try to repopulate this bin after a lot of the worms that had been in here got Kind of gobbled up by little i don't even know what it was maybe a mole or maybe a shrew or who knows what it was but i think we're on the road to recovery here so let's go get some more worms to drop in here i guess i'm kind of lucky because a lot of people set up bins like this in their yard to compost kitchen scraps and things like that and it just so happens that in mine a lot of worms i'm pretty sure they're red wigglers have just made their way into this container on their own. They have a bunch of other creatures, <laughs> including a whole bunch of little flying insects. But anytime I feel like I want to fetch myself some worms, for whatever reason, it seems like I can just come right in here and grab some. So it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit unusual though, because it's not only worms you'll find in here, but um, if you're a regular on my channel, you'll also know that this bin also gets frequented by other composting creatures too such as these black soldier fly larvae and right now they're super plentiful look at these guys go these guys really do a number on whatever I put into this bin all summer long this bin has just been getting loaded up with all kinds of food and no matter how much I pile in here the level never seems to rise and I attest that rapid consumption of food mainly to the, the black soldier flies I believe and I, I think the only gotcha with the black soldier flies unfortunately is that they're not really good when it comes to um, cooler weather in warmer weather environments they do great probably keep them around all year long but um, in my climate I tend to see a die-off black soldier flies each winter but I've been lucky and I've been lucky to have them return you know year after year so even though I uh, even though I get to enjoy the benefits of having them in my compost all summer and the rapid uh, breakdown of it any, pretty much anything I place into this container I do see a, a significant slowdown of this bin's ability to break stuff down once the cool weather rolls in and at that point I typically stop seeing black soldier fly activity in here and those are not the flies themselves obviously those are the larvae of the flies 
Once in a while I see a, a, a mature fly crawling out of this container looking for a mate. And it wouldn't be too surprising to bump into one or two. In some of my uh, previous videos over the summer, anytime we've gone in here, almost every time we've encountered a, a fly just creeping out of the container trying to find itself a mate. Those little guys, I think the most they could do is maybe take a sip of water and keep themselves hydrated until such a time that they've mated and then they drop dead, but they don't even have like a stomach or the ability to actually consume or eat food. Their only job once they turn into a fly is to mate and keel over. <laughs> well, not so much, maybe for the male, for the female, her job is to mate take her fertilized eggs and lay them somewhere and then she can keel over <laughs> so we're doing pretty good here just want to get this job done before the darkness sets in I think it was about a what not even a week ago now that we uh, turned the clocks and we lost that hour of daylight so it just feels like it's it feels like it's mid-afternoon and it feels like it's gonna be dark already any minute now we're not even in the dead of winter yet. I think we've still got another, what, six weeks before the uh, the days start getting longer. So we're just looking at shorter and shorter days over the next few weeks coming up. I'm just trying to uh, exclude anything in here that is clearly not what I came in here for, larger chunks of stuff. Mainly because I'm trying to leave room in here for more and more worms. Even though I know that I'm pulling a whole bunch of stuff out of here that's not worms. Kind of the uh, the collateral that comes along each time I do this and I guess I don't know it's I don't call it collateral damage it's collateral uh, maybe it's a benefit right because a lot of the stuff I'm bringing over here is uh, still uneaten food bits so each time I do this I, I treat it not only as a addition of worms into my outdoor worm bin but I also treat it as a uh, a feeding that was a uh, avocado seed. <laughs> Those things are usually like a rock. The fact that I was able to break it like that was pretty cool. I noticed that. I started putting them into my downstairs worm bins. And I didn't expect them to go very far. And then one day I was able to simply crush one in my fingers. I was quite surprised. I wonder how my gloves are doing. These are slightly better quality gloves than I'm used to using. I was using the El Cheapo gloves for a while, but I ran out of those, the ones that always tear every time I work in these outside worm bins, because there's all kinds of stuff in these containers. All kinds of rough stuff that punctures my glove and ends up ruining it. But that was because I was using those really cheap junk gloves, which I've now run out and what I have remaining are somewhat better gloves at this point, which are definitely able to hold up to this sort of abuse better. I don't have a great deal of room remaining in my little plastic transport tub, and I usually just use one of these tubs filled up as my daily uh, dose. I mean, I could probably sit here all day and scoop stuff out of here. Look at this, some of these worms are so nice and big and fat and healthy. I usually don't get into like looking at individual worms. I usually get more into just knowing that I've got a whole colony of them there. Once in a while you just, you know, notice one worm that looks really healthy. And all the worms in these containers out here look super healthy. And it's not a surprise, right? They get a huge variety of different types of delicious foods all summer long all year round actually but in the summertime there's all kinds of variety all kinds of those fresh summer fruits that you don't get in the winter so even though they're getting stuff all year round there's always a uh, organic waste coming out of the kitchen that belongs down in here stuff that doesn't really get cherry picked to be fed to the worms down in my wormery all ends up out here And not only that, but a lot of the stuff that gets messed up in my garden ends up in here too. 
So all summer long, the creatures that inhabit this container are always getting quite well fed. I think we're kind of nearing the point where I can just call it quits. It's not necessary to go right up to the rim on this thing. It is getting kind of heavy. I'm sitting here holding it by one hand <laughs> on its rim. I wish I had a better handle. Maybe I should be holding it on the bottom. So let's just start piling stuff back down into the hole here. I'm sure this probably helps the bin too. Every time I do one of these, I kind of agitate the material around and send a lot of the uh, uncomposted material down deep and bring a lot of the um, partially broken up stuff to the surface. And I'm sure that the inhabitants don't appreciate getting stirred around like this, but the contents of the bin probably benefit from being sort of stirred down into the bin a little bit better than if they were all just stacked up the way they were. I'm sure all the air that I add by doing this helps a lot too. So I know that we've probably bought a lot of uh, black soldier flies along for the ride here too, but like I said, I think it's just a matter of time before um, the weather out here gets a little bit too chilly for them and they're probably going to go uh, probably hibernate. I think that's what people were saying. I don't think I have to worry about them all dying off, but I believe that they... Um, I believe that the flies themselves go into hibernation and then they start uh, reproducing again when the weather gets more favorable. All right, let's get these guys released into their new home. All right, so we're back here in my outdoor worm bin, not to be uh, confused with my outdoor composting bin and just more traffic rolling by. Hopefully the noise isn't bothering anybody. Let's get these little guys released into their new home. Give them a few minutes to uh, get situated. Make sure we don't have any in the container. Well, we'll try to spread this out a bit, see what kind of a what kind of a roundup we were able to achieve here today, and try to estimate their numbers. I don't really keep track of how many I've got in this outdoor bin so much. I've been trying to do more so in my indoor worm bins, but. Yeah, I guess out of curiosity, I try to estimate what we've got here. I would have to say probably at least 500, 500, 600 worms, maybe more. Let's give them a minute to get situated, and then we'll be done. I can still see some of the black soldier fly larvae. They're just not quite as quick to react to the uh, the daylight as the earthworms are. Pretty sure they're. Red, I'm pretty sure that those are red wigglers that have made their way into my compost bin. So it's the perfect uh, perfect worm for an outdoor worm bin. And um, I'm kind of glad that we were able to resolve the invasion issue here pretty easily, just by lifting the container up off the ground. So all I really did was underneath the bag that the um, the worms inhabit. I have a little uh, a little planter that the bag rests on top of, right here within the um, the tub. So even if uh, even if a little creature makes its way into here through the holes on the bottom, it's unable to get up into the bag because the uh, the bag sits up on top of a planter which has a piece of plywood on it. So it's now elevated and hopefully out of reach of any sort of creatures that might decide to come in here for a quick free meal. So I'm so glad that this uh, system is back online again. I appreciate the encouragement all the viewers gave to get me psyched up to do this. I was about to abandon it, but here it is, back in service again. And who knows, at this point we might even be back up to, who knows, 1,500 or so worms, maybe more. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, Please remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.